good afternoon friends as we always struggle in the railways particularly but in any organization what should be something which you should do in next 10 years 15 years 20 years and that needs a very concrete plan typically the railway being run by the government it is always subject to a lot of different pulls and pressures. People wanting a line to their own, connecting the village to the main city, and rightly so. But in the absence of a very scientific, well-designed plan, it is always difficult to say which is a good idea, which is not a good idea. I was just inquiring, and I think even I was asking earlier when the previous member of the railway board, Mr. Gupta was there and just asking Mr. Pintal, was it made any time in the past such a plan? He said, no, we have never done that any type of a, such a planning before. At best, we could have prepared a vision document, but not something like a national railway plan, which will decide where the line should go, where it should connect, and what is the logic behind it. And therefore, this is a very Good beginning that we are launching a website for National Railway Plan 2030, which is not only for 2030 but a plan for 2050, which will be implemented in the next 35, 25, 35 years. In a way that we capture all the requirements from different stakeholders. We normally every day get proposals and demands for new lines which will be about several thousand crores. There's nothing wrong because we start showing only the demand for it. But if you have a proper structure plan, take into account all those demands and then deciding subsequently the priority for it, it would be a very good for the country, very good for the person who makes the demand. As you could just see, the railway's nodal share has dropped in the last 60 years from 86% due to the peak to now less than 40%. There is no need to go back to 86% because the volume has also increased considerably. And in fact, to expect that everything should come back to the railways is also not a good idea. What should railways be doing is not necessary to compete, but with complement with other modes of transportation. Over a period of time, we'll use our huge 7,600 kilometers of coastline. And we'll have a transportation which will be a sea transport also. Many states in India, particularly in the north and the northeast, which are landlocked, will use road network. There are certain states which are having rivers, they will use the river network. And in fact, that navigation links are also planned. And therefore, if we can complement with each of that, it will be helping railway, it will help the country in a big way. So, so many elements need to be put in place, not to compete, but to complement. Not necessarily to shun any demand, but to find out how the demand can well be structured. Because somebody is making a demand, he does not necessarily know the logistic plan. So, if you can take the demand, why you want this line? Is to serve a particular purpose. So, if the same purpose can be served without putting a line, but by doing something else, that will be helpful. And also, by getting the views of each and every stakeholder. So this plan, which is a website, which is launched today, will allow not just members of parliament, not just members of legislative assembly, not anybody particularly who has something prefix or suffix to his name, can only make suggestions. Anybody can make suggestions. And this suggestion then will be properly structured. In fact, they already member engineering. In fact, Mr. Gupta, we are requested him to chair this expert group to look at this plan. Member Engineering has already created a small cell to get each and every demand that comes in. How can we use modern technology to process that demand? And therefore, this will be happening. In fact, the idea, as was mentioned, will to take into consideration several things. How we can have, first of all, existing plan, what are the deficiencies? Because that was never structured as a plan, so that will be taken care of. Faster movement between important cities of the country. We are never 
And besides, the exponential growth into cities, which we can't even imagine. Only 60 years back, if somebody had thought about Ghaziabad will become this big, or Gurdra will become bigger, almost as big as Delhi, or something like this, nobody could have imagined. Pune was said to be a city of pensioners. Now the pensioners are disappeared, the working people have taken over the city. Bangalore was known as city of lakes. Now nobody knows where the lakes have gone. It was known as garden city. Where are the gardens? So these are all the new changes which happened. So how to connect the, or take into account these new changes? Then the cargo movement with the traffic department will be looking at what are the new sources of the cargo which is going to come and where we should be there for plans should be located, not wait for it. Today we first get the cargo, then we say, okay, cargo is coming, now let us put up a line. It is like going and digging a well when you are thirsty. So rather than that, you must plan for it. And then when you plan, so this will be another element of planning, tourist destination, so many new tourists are coming into play. There was a time when my grandmother wanted to go to a religious yatra. It was impossible to think about, but today anybody wants to travel. And therefore the travel has become one of the driving force for religious tourism, for cultural tourism, for adventure tourism, for leisure tourism, all of this has integrated. And therefore we should work on that then strategic line, not just China, Pakistan, but also our other neighbors which are already somewhat connected, but I think we should think about including Myanmar, because that is what, of course, that is a part of Asia, Trans-Asia network that you have mentioned, but that again should be part of that. We'll take into consideration, as I said, the demand from everybody, even our good friends, journalist friends who are always with us, they can give ideas, state governments can, state government have written letters, all of this. To all the chief ministers, to all my colleague ministries, but others, Fiki, CI, so anybody can give ideas, any NGO can give ideas. And we'll also take into account the National Transport Master Plan, which was prepared earlier. And therefore, this will be an approach towards multimodal transportation, which is going to be the reality. Rather than thinking railways when we came into play 160 years ago, railway was only mode of transportation. Then even when we became independent, and in 1951, that's how it was 86%, there hardly any other network which are developed. And therefore, now, since other networks have developed, how we integrate them into this and also ensure long-term sustainability and do this. This again will be done through web-based collection of suggestions, as I mentioned. Digital GIS map, existing planned infrastructure projects will also be taken into account. For example, not only our infrastructure project, the state government is developing their own infrastructure, we should take them into account. We don't know about it, but state government might say now we are developing Pitampur, which is in Madhya Pradesh. But we say we never knew about it. But this is not, we therefore integrate the ideas in any case. Now the growth in India is not going to be top driven alone, but it will be bottoms up also. States will play a key role, will more important role, so their priorities also must be taken into account. And therefore, route optimization, identification of missing link will be one of the priority. And taking into account the dynamic data driven decision making tools for affects management also will be used. We already got some booklets, but actually this will all be available on, uh, for downloading purposes, but we will be very happy to take it. The idea would be that to prepare something like this will also help a participation of other stakeholders in creating infrastructure, not only use of infrastructure. We want state governments to participate. The problem is, now we have got about 16 states which are agreed in principle. We already got more than 10 states which are advanced and the business plans are getting prepared. But even then, we'll ask them what you want. But suppose whatever they want will be a priority. But is it falling into an oral plan or not? You must have an oral plan. Prioritization can be done later. But if you don't have a plan, then the demand is become the plan itself. So how can it work? So we must have a scientific plan. And that plan while preparing other said, will take into account all the demand. But not to have a plan and therefore go by any demand that comes in is the most unscientific way of doing it. That's what we want to correct. And this was again mentioned in the budget speech. I'm very happy that in a short possible time we are implementing this idea. Hopefully within the next few months itself, we'll take it to the level. I think we should have some deadline maybe in uh, sometime in the middle of next year. We should try to prepare the plan 
and present it to the country and then this will be the first ever plan scientifically made which will be implemented in the next 30 35 years so all the new plan that new capital expenditure that we we'll think about will be part of this overall plan and therefore while we is prepare we are already preparing another plan for safety which is for the existing infrastructure we already prepare a plan for modernizing some of the existing infrastructure there will be another plan but this will be the plan which will be an overall plan which will be available which will take on account everything that railways will be doing in the next 30 35 years so this will be an extremely important document which will be ready this is different just to tell you than a vision document the vision is something different vision can be that everybody should have let's everybody should have railway there should be a vision but that vision is not something very important vision is important to give direction but in absence of a physical plan like this which will be available based on the reality on the ground that vision cannot be implemented so this will be part of a vision anyway but the vision alone will not help us to realize our objective unless we have on the ground plan like this so while we are already we are already prepared something like this we are as you know on the 18 19th 20th of last month november we had a rail vikas shibir in that also a lot of new ideas are coming so we are combining all this and this will be like a vision which will be ideas to be implemented but this will be the basis railway plan on the ground so this is something different than the vision this is more of actual to be done on the ground and therefore i uh, thank all those who met mr gupta mr uh, mittal all their colleagues and of course member traffic mr damshed is also because ultimately what is the purpose of a plan is to move traffic either cargo or the uh, passenger so i think this will be the user of it he will be the creator of it and the idea will be based on all the input that will come from different stakeholders so this is a very good beginning there are many other things which are being done like for example uh, member staff uh, is trying to prepare a enterprise resource planning which is erp which takes into account almost all operations of the railways could be monitored through a erp mechanism to all simplify it i can say that even sitting here you can look at the entire railway operations country wide whether it is related to actual real operations of trains or staff or finance or more purchase or any other function that can easily be monitored like this and this could bring in huge financial benefit to the railway i don't want to give you the number but the top like mr chandrasekhar i mean i can tell you who has said this number mr chandrasekhar who is the ceo of tcs has talked about a huge saving for the railways i don't want to again give the number because let us realize it but incredible number of saving that can come to the railways in the next 3 years time so we are also working on it but non fare revenue which is another very important initiative of the railways today we launched the first train vinyl wrapped train one train alone will give us 5 crores because this is something and that also by the state ministry we did it in the morning so many things which are happening this is part of the element but an important element of national railway plan 2030 for a plan to be implemented by 2050 so i really again once again thank everybody congratulations to those who have made it and we will work together thank you very much